Hi everybody, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. Welcome to this tutorial about zoom lenses and why I think a zoom lens like the 100 to 400 or the 200 to 500, depending on what brand you have, why I think these lenses are great for bird photography. Today's tutorial is about zoom lenses and I've been using mine a lot lately so I thought I would talk about why I prefer it and how it works for me and I think what advantages these lenses really have. And so it doesn't matter if you use the Sigma lens, the Canon lens, the Nikon lens, the Sony lens. All of these lenses are sharp, they perform really well, and they have some distinct advantages over to larger, more expensive prime lenses that might be in the F4 category. I shoot with the Canon 100 to 400 just because I've been shooting Canon for 20 years and the reason I got it into Canon was because they had autofocus before everybody else did and that's really good with bird photography and they also had image stabilization before everybody else did. Those are the reasons that I shoot Canon. It doesn't matter what tool you use. I think all of these cameras, all the brands that are out there right now are good cameras and if you're a good bird photographer and you've developed your skills, the tool you use isn't going to make that much difference. I don't know that there's so much more brand loyalty about this anymore, but what there is is you know, develop your skill and any camera, any lens will work. So this was a picture that I took around 2006, so it's 12 years old. It sells today still. It's sharp. It was taken with a 100 to 400 zoom lens, the early Canon one. That lens was not very sharp. It wasn't super sharp, but you know, through a little bit of post-processing, we can get these things to work. Beautiful bird, beautiful image. Uh, it was taken with a Canon 1D Mark II, so it was a good camera. Here's a picture of a snowy plover, golden hour, nice low angle. So with a 100 to 400 or a zoom, one of these zoom lenses, you're free to walk around, get down lower, you can drop to a knee, you can sit down, you can lay down in the sand, and you can get images like this really, really easily. And so the smaller zoom lenses like this make it a lot easier. And then here's the huge advantage to this. I was up in British Columbia taking pictures of common loons and this bird just surfaces right by the side of the boat. So by being able to zoom back to 100 millimeters, I got three shots off before he dove again. He was just coming back out to where we were to see who we were and check us out. Um, I think he had a nest, you know, a couple hundred yards away. I got that shot. And then as he swam away, I was able to zoom back out here at 285 and compose my images. And here's at 360. We have this flexibility of being very creative with our compositions in camera, but also we're going to be able to get shots that we couldn't get if we had a big fixed lens like a 400, 500, or 600. There's a huge advantage to having that zoom and being flexible with it and being creative with it. Now we can also put a 1.4 extender on these lenses. These blue wing teals were out in the middle of this lake and I decided I wanted to try to get a picture of the blue on the wings. And so I put the extender on there. I'm shooting at 560 millimeters, 400 times 1.4. And then I'm using a crop sensored camera. And so I'm really shooting at 896 effective focal length. And that really drew the, the ducks in quite, quite a bit. Now I'm limited to F8 when I'm shooting it with the 1.4 extender, but that's okay because in a lot of images like this one, the background's gonna be water, it's gonna be nice anyway. This is a nice image. What I didn't do was I should have zoomed out a little bit and I should have gotten the whole reflection of the bird in there. And so here's an image, same bird, little different area of the pond, but I was zoomed out to 520, so I still had the 1.4 extender on, but I got the whole bird in, and he's eating something, and so it was a kind of a nice behavioral shot. And then here's another example at 520, so zooming out a little bit more, the bird was moving closer to us, so we were able to keep shooting and keep composing images by just zooming in a little bit. And then here, I'm shooting at the straight 400. I've got a little bit more flexibility with my depth of field. I can shoot at uh, f5.6 instead of f8 but at 400 millimeters I cut off the reflection and I should have zoomed out a little bit here's another example I'm zoomed in a little bit but I still cut out the reflection and this is what I'm really looking for is that I can zoom out far enough to get the whole reflection in and create kind of a very nice reflection a dynamic image beautiful image 
These lenses are also very good for birds in flight photography because you can react really quickly. You can have the 100 to 400 on your camera. It can be by your side on a strap and you can pull it up and get a few snaps like I did with these Dunlin really, really quickly. Here I was tracking this American Avocet and it was flying around this pond, early morning light, lots of flexibility with composition, with getting on the birds quickly. So there's some real advantages to shooting with these zoom lenses. And then I think one of the places, these lenses really work super well if you're ever on a boat shooting seabirds or whale watching, or you're riding a ferry someplace, because you can handhold the lens you're going to get a good image with image stabilization, have a fast shutter speed, but your body is going to dampen the vibration of the boat. And so that's going to get you the best shot. Like if you tried to use a tripod and a 600 millimeter lens, the vibration from the boat engine would go up the legs and it would shake the camera and you your image stabilization probably wouldn't work. There's just so much vibration and so much movement. Stabilizing yourself on the boat, feet wide apart, one's foot slightly in front of the other one, maybe leaning up against a rail. You can get some really good images on boats with these handheld zoom lenses. These lenses have been described as great walk around lenses and I think that's what they're beautiful at. So you can be walking around and things will happen and you'll be able to react quickly and get the shot. So this juvenile burrowing owl jumped up onto this twig and I was able to get a few shots of him just as he was landing because I was able to react really quickly. And then I was standing around talking with some photographer friends and this kill deer decided to stretch its wings before it flew away. And so I got a couple of shots with its wings up in the air. And it's all because I used it as a walk around lens. I can react really quickly and I can get a composition that I want. So yes, there are some disadvantages, okay? So prime lenses offer an F4 uh, aperture, and so you're gonna have a softer background. You're gonna have more magnification. You know, you're gonna be able to more reach. You can, the bird's gonna be larger in the frame. And so that's an advantage. The disadvantage with a prime is that it's really heavy. It can be awkward. If you're shooting out of the car, it can be tough to grab it from the back seat or even the passenger side seat. It takes quite a bit of arm strength to do that all, all day long. I've never gotten tired using the 100 to 400 on my camera driving around at wildlife refuges or walking around. With the extender on though, with the 1.4 extender on, we're limited to f8 for my autofocus. I'm also limited to one point of focus. Now in some of the Canon cameras we can expand that so there's four assist points around the single point in the center. But you can work with that. You know, you just have to work a little bit higher, develop a little bit more skill in acquiring the bird and staying on the bird. But when that works, that extra 1.4 reach is, is going to be great. But it is a, a bit of a disadvantage. I use the 100 400 almost as much as I use the 600 because I have this flexibility with it that the 600 doesn't offer me. And so when I'm taking pictures like this with the Dunlin at sunset, I can zoom in and out and create different kinds of images and it works really well. These lenses are sharp. Don't let people tell you they aren't. This is a 100 to 400 shot of a tufted puffin and then I zoomed in to make it a headshot. A lot of people will say that these lenses aren't sharp. That used to be true. I don't think that's true anymore. I think the technology is advanced enough. These work really well. Ease of use, the ability to make your composition in camera, quick reaction time, great for birds in flight. These are wonderful tools and you should have one in your camera bag. Hey, thanks a lot for watching today. I really appreciate it. If you want to learn more about bird photography, consider getting a copy of my book, Learn the Art of Bird Photography. It's available at Amazon as a Kindle and as a trade paperback. Another way you can get my book is you can get a signed copy of the book at timboyerphotography.com and I will mail it off to you. If you'd like to learn even more about bird photography, consider taking one of the workshops that I lead. These are in-depth. They're full of instructions. We go to places where there are great birds, lots of birds for you to practice on, and it can be a really good experience, and you will learn a ton about bird photography. Hey, give me a subscribe, share, or like if you enjoy what I'm doing on my channel. Thanks a lot. Bye.